Hi, this video is on Wheatstone Bridge. So here I've, I've written up a, a schematic of a Wheatstone Bridge and as you'll notice here you have a power supply and you have four resistors. You have R1, R2, R3, and Rx. Here this A symbolizes an ammeter, or an amp meter. And this is a switch, as, and this is just a switch to open and close the circuit between them. So uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So here I redrew the circuit and let's assume that you have a power supply, we'll call this VS, and it has 10 volts on it. And here you have our resistor R1, which is equal to 50 ohms, and you have another resistor, which is R2, and that's equal to 50 ohms as well. So from here to here, uh, there will be 10 volts. And since R1 is equal to 50 ohms and R2 is equal to 50 ohms, they're actually going to drop uh, the voltage equally. So you're going to feel from here to here 5 volts. And if I put my, my, uh, my meter from my voltmeter from here to here, I'm going to feel 5 volts. Um, and now let's draw a second one. So here we have this other circuit, which I have a power supply. And here I, um, I've, I've hooked up VS, which is 10 volts, to right here and to right here. So from here to here, you will feel 10 volts. Now here I have R3, and R3 is 2 ohms, and Rx, I'm just going to say it's 2 ohms. Now since these, since R3 and Rx are equal, they're going to equally split up this voltage or drop this voltage. So R3 is going to feel 5 volts here, and Rx is going to feel 5 volts from here to here as well. So now what happens if I take this circuit and I connect it to this one. Well, then I would get a circuit that looks like this. Here, I just took this circuit, it's right there, and then I just copied this one and I pasted it to right here. So now here, I, I still have VS, which is 10 volts, and it's felt all the way across from here to here. So this is, the, um, so if I put my meters anywhere from here, my voltmeter anywhere from here to here, anywhere on this line, I'll have 10 volts. And uh, here, the the resistance values for these resistors did not change. The Rx and R3 are still 2 volts. R2 and R1 are still 50 ohms. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 2 ohms, 2 ohms on these resistors. So, uh, R1 is still going to drop 5 volts. So from here to here, if I put my meter from here to here, I'm still going to feel 5 volts. If I put my meter from here to here, it's still going to be 5 volts. Same with R3. R3 is still going to drop 5 volts from there to there, and Rx is going to drop 5 volts from here to here. <coughs> now, the currents, the currents will be different. So the current, uh, the current A in this branch will be some value, and the current B in this branch will be some value as well. Now, if you've noticed, this is actually the circuit that we have over here, minus the ammeter right here. We'll put that in later. But if you notice, these are right here. This branch is open, so they're actually not connected right now. But they, they have this branch right here where current A is going to flow, and you have this branch over here where current B is going to flow. And these two branches are actually in parallel, which is what we have here. Just written differently. See, this, I drew a long line right here, but imagine, oh, and I, and I bent these two branches to make it look like, to make this uh, look this way. But uh, yeah, it's the same exact circuit. But now, I added a little twist. I put a line right across it, right here. So if I connect this spot to this spot, uh, it gets kind of, it could get kind of tricky. I guess the question is, is any current gonna flow through here? Uh, and the answer to that would be no. No current will actually flow through here. And the reason is, is because I have five volts right here. And I have five volts right there. And current always flows from an area of higher potential to an area of lower potential. So if this is, has a potential of 5 volts and this has a potential of 5 volts, current will not flow through here at all. In order for current to flow through here, I would have to have a difference of potential. So if I had, let's say, 10 volts here and I had 1 volt here, then the current would flow from here to here. Uh, an area of high potential to an area of low potential. But in this situation, I have 5 volts here and I have 5 volts here, so no current's going to flow through here. I, I know it might seem a little counterintuitive, but that's uh, that's just the way it is, because that's how current works. So if, if there's no difference of potential, and that's the key, if there's no difference, then current will not flow. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much the Wheatstone Bridge. I'm going to actually work out some...
problems for you in the next one because I think right now I'm running out of time. So uh, check out the second video. We'll start working on some problems in that one. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.